It's Ask the Optimist. Dear Optimist, my husband, who knows very well that I love nothing more than wearing bonnets, recently bought a convertible. He's always doing passive-aggressive things like this. Like once, after I had all my teeth pulled, he bought a big box of Cracker Jack. Another time, when I had very serious burns over 90% of my body, he tricked me into getting a hot oil massage, then tripped me so that I fell into a vat of hydrochloric acid. I've long since forgiven him for these misunderstandings, but tell me, is there any way I can be optimistic about this bonnet situation? Signed, Mad, due to no more bonnets. Dear Mad, you can still wear bonnets while riding in a convertible, but you will just have to have more of them to start with. What I recommend, buy a large number of bonnets, place them in the car, begin driving. When one blows off, put on another from your enormous stockpile. And just think of all the happiness you will create in your wake as people who cannot afford bonnets scurry after your convertible collecting your discards. Super! Dear Optimist, my wife is a terrific artist, except when it comes to me. Whenever she paints me, my legs are half the length of my torso. My face looks like the face of a frog. My feet are splayed outward unattractively like the feet of some hideous reptile, and I have a smug, pinched look on my face. Anyone else she paints, they look exactly like themselves. I pretend not to notice, but recently, at my wife's one-woman show, I could tell our friends were discussing this, and I felt embarrassed. How might I have handled this in a more optimistic way? Signed, Hurt But Hopeful. Dear Hurt But, after receiving your letter, I sent a private investigator to your home with a camera. And guess what? Have you looked in the mirror lately? Your legs are squat. Your face is the face of a frog. Your feet are reptilian. Your expression is smug and pinched. So, not to worry. Your wife is a terrific artist. Dear Optimist, a few years ago, I inadvertently declared war on the wrong country. Also, I perhaps responded a little slowly to a terrible national disaster. Also, many of my friends are under indictment. Well, also, the organization of which I'm in charge is all of a sudden in, in huge crushing debt. And I still have over two years left in my job. Advice? Signed, In Somewhat Over My Head. Dear In Somewhat, stay the course, admit to nothing, disparage your enemies, perhaps declare another war? Do you have any openings in your cabinet? It sounds like you could use a little optimism. What would you pay? Have your people call my people. Dear Optimist. Recently, my wife left me for another man. Not only that, the other man was bigger, better looking, and richer than me. And, at least according to my wife, better endowed, and with a nicer singing voice and less back hair. To tell the truth, I'm feeling somewhat pessimistic about the situation. Advice? Signed, depressed because my penis is smaller relative to that of my wife's new and more handsome lover. Dear small penis, why not try to look on the bright side? At least he is not more articulate than you. Dear Optimus. Oh, yes, he is. I, I forgot that. Dear small penis, no worries. I believe in you. She is clearly not the right woman for you, and by accepting this... Uh, actually, Ralph speaks five languages and is just finishing up a translation from the Sanskrit of an ancient text on social deportment. And Judy is the right woman for me. I, I just know it. I could never love anyone else. I'd rather... I'd rather die. Wow, no wonder she left you. You are so negative. Also, somewhat pig-headed. I know, right? That's exactly what Judy always said. Uh, what's the point of living anymore? I'm just going to take these fast-acting suicide pills. You know, small penis, you don't seem to understand optimism at all. What is the essential quality of the optimist? He is non-pessimistic. What is the essential quality of the pessimist? They think too much, then get all depressed and paralyzed. Like you, small penis. Me, I prefer to think as little as possible and stay peppy, peppy and active. If something is bothering me, I think of something else. If someone tells me some bad news, I ignore it. Okay, small penis? Hello? Oh, well, I guess he's off moping somewhere. Next! I am an emaciated single mother living in a vast famine affected region of Africa with my four starving children. Rebels frequently sweep down 
from the hills with automatic weapons and kill many of us and violate and abuse the others. All our men are dead or have been driven away and there is no food or fresh water to be had. I would be very appreciative of any advice you might be able to offer us. Signed, not altogether hopeful. Dear Hopeful, thanks so much for writing. Perhaps it would be of some consolation for me to tell you what a vast minority you are in. There are, relative to the world's population, very few people, quote, in your boat. Most of the rest of us are not starving or in danger. And, in fact, most of us do not even know that you are starving and in danger and are just out here leading rich, rewarding lives, having all kinds of fun. Does that help? I hope so. And remember, trouble can't last forever. Soon, I expect, your troubles will be over. Dear Optimist, Recently, my father-in-law backed over me with his guard. When I complained, he backed over me again. When, from beneath the wheels of his car, I complained again, he got out of his car, covered me in molten metal, hauled me to a public park, mounted me on a pedestal, and placed at my feet a plaque reading, Sloth. That gives. I'm trying to think about this incident in an optimistic way, but I am having some difficulties as my chin itches and I am unable to reach it with my bronze encrusted arms. Signed, I love parks, but hey, this is ridiculous. Dear loves parks. Oh, really? Bronze encrusted arms? Then how did you make this call? Um, uh, well, one of my arms is not, uh, not totally bronze encrusted. Then why don't you scratch your chin with that arm? Is that you, small penis? I thought your voice was familiar. Were you faking it just now when you said you were taking those pills? And you're not really encrusted in bronze at all, are you? That's right, genius. I am not dead, and I am not encrusted in bronze. And I am not giving up, and in fact, I am going to go and try to get Judy on the phone right now. If she'll just listen to me, then I'll know she'll... Dear Optimus, I'm a man trapped in a turkey's body. I have dim memories of my life as a human, but then I look down, and there are my waddles. Sometimes when it rains, I find myself gazing at the sky, mouth open, gullet slowly filling with rain. I'm really starting to feel badly about myself. Can you help? Signed, Chagrin Gobbler. Dear Gobbler, of course I can help. Come to my house for some private counseling. Does Christmas work for you? And do you know anyone trapped in a pig's body? Wait for me at what I call the waiting spot. It's a tree stump with an axe leaning against it. Until then, I suggest eating as much as you can, preferably some high-quality corn. And keep your chin up, or your waddles up, or whatever. Dear Optimist, I am feeling so great. I have totally internalized all the wonderful things you've taught us over the years. I am just so excited. Signed, Thrilled to be Alive, Never Felt Better. Dear Thrilled, Super, did you have a question? No, not really. Then what the heck? What is the name of this show? Is it Make a Statement to the Optimist? Is it Come Up in Here and Act All Like Mr. Perfect? Is it No Problem? I totally respect what you're saying. Many apologies, and I hope you have a great day. Jeez, what an asshole. Well, that's about all the time we have, so... Dear Optimist, damn it, Judy would not take my call. This is the worst day of my life. Signed, Small Penis. Small Penis, we are done here, done for the day. Do I come to your work and mess with you? I don't work, and thanks very much for rubbing that in. You know what? I've had it with you. I'm coming straight over right now, got it? How do you feel about that, smart guy? Signed, Small Penis. Dear everyone, please call the police. I am sure it will be fine. Oh, God, he's here. He's breaking down the door. Please call the police. Help! Help! Dear Optimist, how do you like that? How does that feel, Mr. Superior? Dear everyone, ouch! Ouch! Oh, God. Dear everyone, it is finished. The Optimist is no more. We are at last free of his arrogance. And Judy, if you're out there, size isn't everything. And articulate isn't everything. And tall isn't everything. And also, sweetie, I have just now had my back waxed. Give me some hope. Signed, Small Penis, a.k.a. Steve. Dear Small Penis, a.k.a. Steve. Hi, Steve. How's it going? I'll be replacing the optimist here at the column. 
Just call me the new optimist. Super! What I recommend? Turn yourself in. There will be good food in jail and time for contemplation. And who knows, you may even, eventually, have a great spiritual realization and pull your head out of your ass. Isn't that better than living on the lamb? Judy is not taking you back. No way. And I should know, Judy is staying with me. Forever! Signing off. Thrilled to be alive, never felt better, a.k.a. the new optimist. Dear Ralph, you bastard, is that really you? You scum, you wife stealer, look what you've reduced me to. I am now a murderer. I murdered the optimist. My God, the look on his face. Even at the end, he was trying so hard to smile pleasantly. Dear Steve-O, yep, you schmuck, it is me, Ralph. And guess what? I followed you over here. I am right outside. You'll never harass poor Judy again. I have with me a letter I've written, which I will plant on your corpse. So all the world will believe that, after killing the optimist, you did away with yourself in a bizarre murder-suicide. You are a fool. And the optimist was a fool. If one really wants to be an optimist, there is only one way. Win. Always win. Be superior and never lose. Slaughter your enemies and live on so that you, and only you, are left to write the history books. Goodbye, Steve. Ralph rules. Here I come. Oh, you look so scared. I'm going home to make optimistic love to the beautiful Judy. And from now on, this show is mine. No more working at the oil change place while trying to write my Sanskrit book on weekends. I am the new optimist. Dear New Optimist, I recently left my husband of 10 years for a new man. Although I feel I basically did the right thing, my ex was small penis and hairy-backed and not very articulate, I have to admit I feel a little guilty. What do you suggest? Signed, Completely Happy, Almost. Dear Completely Happy, Don't worry about it. It's all good. What I'd recommend is, as soon as your new man gets home from wherever he is right now, Make love to him more ferociously than you've ever made love to anyone in your life. Show your love by doing things to him you never even contemplated doing with that boring loser Steve. Okay, will do. As a matter of fact, he just rang the bell. You gotta go. Signed, completely happy, all the way. See, how did you know my ex-husband's name was Steve? Dear completely happy all the way. Don't be so negative. That's what got you in trouble in the first place, Judy. You think too much. Just be quiet and do what I say. Follow my lead. Open the door, Judy. Open the door so we can begin our beautiful life together. And don't even think of backtalking me, Missy. Dear new optimist, okay, super, thanks for the advice. Come in, Ralph. My God, you look flushed and... Honey, gosh, why are you holding that bludgeon? Signed, completely happy all the way, although maybe just a little bit scared now, a.k.a. Judy. Dear Judy, there will be no problems whatsoever, Judy, if you simply acknowledge my absolute supremacy in a way that continually pleases me. And this is not a bludgeon. It's a bouquet of flowers, right? Right, Judy? Well, that's all the time we have. Not that I'm complaining. See you next time. Never doubt yourself, and if you start feeling down, castigate yourself. And if others try to put the slightest trace of doubt in your mind, rebuke them. And should your rebuke not alter their speech, you may bring harm to them, even unto death. And after they have died, feel free to arrange their rictus stiffening mouths into happy, hopeful smiles. And that's an order. Believe me, you'll be doing them a favor. Just kidding. You are special!